Hey guys, welcome back to another IP camera video. This video will be about selecting an NVR, or rather, the steps and process I went through to select the NVR I'm currently running, which is NX Witness. So, let me guide you through that process, and uh, hopefully in the end you'll learn something while selecting your own NVR. First off, this video will be about software NVRs, or network video recorders, and not so much hardware NVRs. I already have a server, a PUE switch, and storage, so I don't need an extra box to provide that. So, if you're looking for that, I recommend checking the brand your cameras are also from, because those mostly match the features of the cameras in the NVR best. If you haven't seen the video where I show the IP cameras I selected, check over here. There I highlight all the models I selected in different price ranges and that I use around the house and at my events. But back to NVRs. For the last few years, I've been using software called Genius Vision. And while that NVR worked pretty well for the last few years, over the last two, three years, uh, it kind of stayed behind in features. And when testing with the new 8 megapixel 4K cameras, it really couldn't handle it very well. I think it's still good software. And if you only use H.264 and like two or maybe four megapixel cameras, it can probably work okay for you. But personally, I needed to move on, so I started looking. And while looking, I discovered there's a lot of NVR software out there. So I made myself a list in primary and secondary, well, demands or features I was looking for to select and test. Now the primary features are H.264 and H.265 or HEVC support for at least the Dehua cameras I was using. For all the other cameras I wanted to use, like Chinese models or something else, it needed to have robust ONVIF support, including PTZ. It also needed to be able to support the new 8 megapixel cameras, 4K, with ease, even if I'm using 16 or 24 of those. I wanted something with a good interface and preferably a good mobile app. Now a website version or interface can do, but I'd much rather prefer at least a Windows app and Mac and Linux are bonus. And as I mentioned just now, I wanted to have the ability to run well, at least 10 cameras at home and 36 cameras during my events with moderate hardware usage. If I have to buy an i7 with uh, six cores to run 10 cameras, that kind of defeats the point. I wanted to run as a VM on my VMware server and use the storage on my storage server. And it can use some CPU memory, but well, not more than it's actually useful or eff efficient, I guess. Secondary features I'd like to have are open source or free, because, well, who doesn't like free? Motion detection, either and or server based or using ONVIF profiles where the camera can actually send an alert to the server so the camera can do the processing and the server will just record when requested. And preferably, I'd like a Linux CLI version. I don't see the use of running a big Windows server with a GUI and everything, especially when it's a VM, which always eats more resources. So a small command line package for the server and then a nice interface for the desktop and mobile client would be best. So I looked at the usual suspects and let me read from my list here. I looked at Zoneminder, iSpy, Shinobi, Blue Iris, Milestone, and a whole lot of, lot of software, including the native offering from Dahua the brand I use most cameras from. But after testing all those, I was mostly disappointed really. It either couldn't handle eight megapixel whatsoever and would grind to a complete halt even after adding one or two cameras, or when I did find a pa software package I liked and did some stuff well, it would eat so much resources that I'd have to dedicate a complete computer or actually real server to be able to handle the cameras I have. So, in the end, I looked for a month or so and came back very disappointed, especially in the open source offerings. I thought 
nowadays that there'd be one that could handle all of this, but there was none that could fulfill my primary, let alone secondary requirements. Well, of course it could fulfill the open source one, but that's not that important if I don't like the software. Even something simple like adding an 8 megapixel camera and having a nice interface where I can view the footage from the camera, non-transcoded H.265 in its native compression on the desktop or on a mobile interfa web interface or on a mobile app turned out to be quite a challenge. But after a while, and I'd almost given up or thought about building something myself with scripts or whatever was available, I came across DW Spectrum Watchdog. And after tinkering with their one month free trial for a little bit, I noticed it was the OEM version for NX Witness. Now, software wise, these packages are almost the same, but uh, Watchdog is the US version and NX Witness is the EU version. And since I live in the Netherlands, I deinstalled Watchdog and installed NX Witness. And as I said, it's basically the same software. So, Let's go over that for a bit. First off, it ticks all the boxes in my primary feature list and most in my secondary feature list. And while it might not be the best in all features, like some other software has more sophisticated motion detection right now, it did a lot of other stuff really well. H.265 worked out of the box and it actually worked in the native Windows app or on my mobile phone with hardware decoding. Excellent. Their Windows client is written in OpenGL and it has no problem displaying 24 8 megapixel cameras at the same time. It does this using a special trick, but it works, it's fast, it doesn't lose, use a lot of resources so that you can't use that PC anymore, and it just re works really well. Next, it has a lightweight CLI Linux version for Ubuntu. Great. Uh, the one I run at home with 10 cam 8 megapixel cameras has 1 gigabyte of memory, 2 cores, and it only uses a fraction of those resources. Excellent. To boot, it can actually mount my storage over NFS or SIFS, so I can use the storage in my NAS and don't have to have any locally in the VM. Excellent. One other thing I found really handy is they offer a sort of cloud service where you don't have to open any ports on your router, and you can easily connect inward to your own running server. So the server doesn't run in the cloud, they only use it to make it easily accessible. That means wherever you are with the mobile app or the desktop app, you can quickly sign into your server or actually multiple servers if you have multiple connected to your account. It's very easy to share logins to other people for just a single camera, or other cameras or multiple cameras and Normally I don't really like cloud features, but this one did exactly what I what I like and didn't have uh, force me to run the server in the cloud actually. So that's great too. So it does a lot of things right, but one of the things it's not is open source. It's not free either. And although that's a downside, I'd rather pay for good software than use something that only works a little bit or I irritate myself on every day. So cost wise, they have an eight camera starter pack, which will cost you about 300, 350 euros. Now, if you compare that to a Synology box or other camera vendors or NVR vendors, I guess, that's actually pretty competitive. A good thing to note, this is not a subscription. This is a lifetime product license key. It is linked to a hardware ID, but it do allow you to move it a few times if you need to. So instead of paying a yearly subscription for 100, 150 euros or whatever, especially those Google cameras, they're outrageously expensive if you calculate that for five years, this is a one-time investment and will last that time. Also, the software is an active development and uh, for instance, one of the features they're adding right now is uh, mo in-camera motion detection, which can then signal the server, so it needs even less processing power than it does now. Okay, enough talking for this video. Let me quickly run you through the interface and show you some basic things of the software. As I said, this will be the, well, I like guess, simple video about NX Witness, and I'll do another advanced video 
uh, where I show you some more advanced videos, the actual install process. And we're going to see if the Mealy uh, PC, PCG35 I looked at a while back, uh, I'll probably show you a clip here, uh, in my DIY cloud project could actually make a cheap and decent NVR server. So let's take a look. When you open up the Windows interface, the first screen you see is to log into your cloud account. If you've already logged in, you see all the systems you have access to and can quickly switch between them. The main interface has been written to use OpenGL hardware acceleration from your GPU. This provides very snappy performance while also looking nice. While looking at the task manager at the same time, you can see that looking at this overview with six cameras costs very little CPU usage. When you open up a single camera, you can see that the native H.265 footage at 4K is being displayed. This video isn't recorded in 4K, so don't judge image quality from this video. Check my IP camera review video for that. There should be a link in the top, or otherwise you can find it in the description. All my cameras are set to record in low resolution 24 hours a day and record both low and high during movement. This saves a lot of bandwidth and disk space and has worked really well for me. A similar feature to this is also present in the interface. When for instance displaying 24 cameras on the screen at the same time, it's useless to try and render them as a 4K image, each the size of a stamp. What NX Witness does is it shows the low quality version in an overview screen, but seamlessly switches to the high quality version once you enlarge it. I love this feature a lot, and it keeps my system working fast, even though I have NX Witness open on one of my monitors while doing other things. Skipping around in the footage is very quick and responds immediately. But finding footage you're looking for can be hard, and this is an area where NX Witness also shines. Using their smart search feature, you can quickly see when motion occurred in the highlighted squares. This even works on a timeline where you see red highlights where there was motion. That way you can check the motion that happened at those times and quickly find what you were looking for, instead of having to watch hours and hours of footage for when the motion actually occurred. As you can see, skipping around and switching between low and high resolutions is very quick. This skipping around isn't limited to one camera view, you can even do so in the overview screen and all cameras will change with your clicks at the same time. At the overview screen, you can show an additional square where it shows some statistics of the server usage. As you can see, skipping around raises usage a little bit, but not by much. And as I mentioned, this is just a simple VM with its storage on a NAS over the network. And mind you, this simple VM is actually doing motion detection on eight 8 megapixel 4K cameras at the same time. As the last part of the video, let's take a quick look at the mobile app. This is a Galaxy S7, which by no means is a very high-end smartphone anymore. But as you can see, it can still display the native H.265 footage at 4K, or at least when you zoom in because the screen is in 4K. But because you get the native footage at H.265, you don't have to use a lot of bandwidth, so this works very well when you're remote. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed, well, the reasoning behind why I selected NX Witness in the end and a quick look at the program. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, take a look at my video about the IP cameras I selected and why. And I'm hoping to get back to you soon with a more advanced video about uh, NX Witness. And I'm also hoping to do a video about PoE and different methods you can use for that. And I already teased a little hint about a special PoE method where you can use one cable to connect two cameras. But uh, that'll have to wait. So uh, if you like the video, like it. If you want to subscribe, that's always very much appreciated. And I recently started a new Discord server 
where if you have any lengthy questions that don't really fit the comments, come over there and chat with us and uh, hopefully we can give you an answer and otherwise just come and hang out. So, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.